What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Dirk Hamilwood, and in this video, I'll be reviewing Chapter 2, Section 1, Types of Computers. We will, re we will be covering all types of computers that you can expect to see on the IB exam in the spring. Alright, the, we'll, the first type we'll be covering are, are supercomputers. These are the cutting edge of computing technology in today's industry. They're the largest, fastest, most powerful, and most expensive computers available. They achieve high processing speeds through multiprocessing, which is the use of large amounts of separate processors, often hundreds or even thousands. These are only accessible in government and scientific research facilities because of their huge cost uh, for one to buy and for two to maintain because they often take up entire rooms and use massive uh, complex cooling systems. Mainframes are also very powerful computers, sim similar to supercomputers. However, they are optimized for high data throughput rather than processing power. This means they can sift through extremely large amounts of data very quickly. Tasks requiring a large amount of simple calculations use mainframes, such as bank, transa bank transaction processing, tra travel reservations, um, and other um, low-intensity tasks. Desktop computers. These are the consumer standard. They are commonly found in homes, offices, and schools. They are much cheaper than laptop computers and they use standard interfaces and generic parts, meaning they're easier to maintain and repair. Uh, so most people buy these as a standard home computer. They are ergonomically superior to laptops due to their adjustable monitors and separate peripherals such as keyboards, mice, um, and uh, just other general peripherals. Laptop computers. These are designed to be portable. They generally include a standard keyboard, a 14 to 17 inch LCD screen, and a Wi-Fi card. They range from high to low processing power, much the same as desktop, desktop computers, but as I said earlier, they are designed to be more portable uh, and, are, are, and, are, and are of use in many, um, many, many more situations than desktop computers might be. Netbooks. These are laptop computers that are especially small, designed for maximum portability. They are designed to provide internet access and an email connection and occasionally a word processing software, but that's, that's really about it. They're designed for business professionals and people that have to travel a lot. So they typically have a, low, a slow processor, a small amount of RAM, and a small, low-resolution screen, not allowing, to do the, not allowing them to do much more than, as I said, uh, internet access, email connection, and, and word processing. Staying in sync. This, this section covers how most mobile phones or PDAs come with software that allow data synchronization with a home computer. This connection generally takes place during a, using a USB, infrared, or Bluetooth connection. This generally allows contacts, emails, and assorted files such as pictures uh, and app data to be synced between a home computer such as a desktop or a laptop computer and a mobile device. PDAs. These are somewhere in between netbooks and mobile phones in terms of size and function. They are also called Palm Pilots, Palm Top Computers, um, and Personal Organizers. They usually have larger screens than mobile phones, but lack keyboards, so touch screens or soft keyboards are often used. So they are generally suited for quickly viewing or inputting information, rather than extended browsing uh, or massive uh, input of data. Smartphones. These fulfill normal phone functions, such as making calls and sending text messages, but have many more capabilities. Many have a built many have built-in digital cameras with the ability to record video, sound, and images. Many digital applications called apps can be downloaded online to enhance the function of these devices. Internet access is standard on smartphones, as um, all of them, all of them more or less include Wi-Fi cards. Embedded systems. An embedded system is a specialized computer which is located inside another device. For example, in cars, they control the anti-lock braking system and engine management systems. Uh, in washing machines, they um, manage the dry cycles and other um, like uh, specialized options. They are different from other computers because they are only programmed to carry out one specific task and cannot be overwritten, meaning they are cheap to produce uh, and can be put in um, cheaply manufactured uh, products. These are the references I used, uh, the standard IT ITGS book, 
uh, the opening and closing sound, and I created this PowerPoint. So uh, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.